Hello and welcome to my garden. Today we are looking at the onions that I have planted here in containers. I started these from seed way back in January, February, and we are now nearing the end of July. And these onions have all flopped over, as you can see. That's a sure sign that they are almost ready to harvest. I've left them laying here uh, like this for a week or so. Try to refrain from watering them so that they dry out a little bit. If we just zoom in here, you can see these are my yellow globes. They have flopped over. The necks are soft. They've started to develop kind of a skin around them here. So I think it's time to pull them out and let them dry out and cure. And hopefully we can store them for several months. So hopefully I can get a nice supply of these cured and can store in a cool spot in my basement. So I'm going to start off by pulling these onions and storing them in my garden wagon here. So I think this wagon here is going to be a perfect spot for them to cure off for the next week or two. They'll get lots of airflow. We can store this in a spot out of the direct sunlight where there's lots of wind and hopefully this will be a great spot for them to cure it. So my onions aren't super huge but it's it's an improvement from last year for me personally especially these uh, yellow globes here they turned out really nice pretty happy with those so i'm just going to pull them all out here lay them out in my wagon I do have some Walla Wallas also in this tub on this side. I don't know. They could have been a little bit bigger. I know Walla Wallas are normally a lot bigger than that. But nonetheless, this is what I got. I'm pretty happy. So I just kind of finger around them. Gently pull them out so that they come out with all their roots. So picking onions, obviously a very easy thing to do. Definitely the yellow globes are looking bigger than the Walla Walla. So I don't do a lot of in-ground gardening other than my potatoes. And uh, I think these have done well for container gardening. And very easy to maintain. Pretty easy to pull weeds out of these containers. I gave them a fertilizer once or twice in uh, the month of July, early June. So these little tiny ones here will probably get eaten up pretty quickly. And in this tub, it's all Walla Walla onions. I tried to keep them spaced out so that they, you know, could get as big as possible. I did a little spooning around them early July when they were starting to develop tried to thin them out by picking the odd ones that were too close together. Again, not a bad size. These will be great. Just, you know, one for a meal when you need an onion. These are going to be a nice size to cook with. We cook with a lot of onions pretty much on a daily basis. I'm adding onions to my cooking. So I'm excited to have a good supply that will hopefully last me you know, till the end of this year. I just think that's beautiful. It's like a bouquet of beautiful onions. So I don't have a cold room per se in my basement. We have in-floor heat in our basement, so don't have a cold room set up down there, unfortunately. We didn't think about that when we built our house 20 some years ago. It's a beautiful, nice, cozy basement with that floor heat. But there's one corner of the, the space, an empty bedroom now, that uh, the floor heat doesn't seem to be working very well. Never did. So that room is actually extra cool. It's in the north uh, west corner of the house. Doesn't get a lot of direct sunlight in that room. So I think that's going to be uh, my new cold room this winter. So we're going to hopefully get some shelves set up in there to store potatoes and onions. And my last container here is the ruby ring onion. So these are a red onion. Again, we've been picking these a lot and eating them fresh. 
So this is my ruby ring onion harvest here. So there is my onion harvest for 2023. Not bad for a little garden. <laughs> so I'm going to leave these in this uh, wagon to dry and cure. I'll push them over in a spot that's kind of out of direct sunlight, but gets lots of airflow. You want these uh, stems here to kind of dry up. Maybe some more skin to uh, develop around that and that will help protect it and keep it uh, fresh so that it will store longer over the next few months. So I've already done some harvesting of my garlic a few days ago that I didn't do any filming of, but this is what I've gotten so far. So this is a hardneck garlic variety that I planted last fall here in the in the ground. Some of the cloves were from my previous harvest from last year that I replanted, some were I purchased from the store. So how you know that they are ready to harvest is when you look down at the base here and you can see that some of the leaves are starting to yellow and die back. Usually two to four leaves is a sign that these are ready to harvest. And like the onions, you should try and dry out the soil and not water them for a week or two before you harvest, just so when you pull them out, you don't uh, do any damage if they're too wet. So I have my soaker hose that runs through the garlic here into my lasagna garden bed. So I'm running it every day or two. So I didn't really dry it out in some of these spots like I should have. And then as you can see, when I tried to pull this one out, it kind of ripped away the roots because it was a little too wet and soft. So this one will probably have to be eaten right away it might not cure as well but just to show you give you an idea of the difference between a, a garlic clove that's well watered and some that aren't as well watered this one was growing right next to my soaker hose all summer same with that one there as you can see they're a lot stronger and bigger so watering definitely does make a difference this is probably the biggest garlic clove I've ever grown pretty excited about that one so this spot that I picked to grow garlic in is right next to some of my chokecherry bushes here, which you can see are almost ready to pick. And I'm dealing with a lot of suckers from the chokecherries coming into this area. So I've been kind of battling that. I'm not sure if this is the best place for the garlic. I do want to try next year to grow garlic in containers because that's how I do most of my gardening. I'm just not sure how they will uh, make it through the winter um, in a container. If the, the cold weather that we go through, you know, the minus 30, 35 degree cold in the winter can be pretty brutal on any perennials that you're trying to keep alive. So we'll see how that goes. We can also plant garlic in the spring, early, early spring. So I might do that as well, but it's so easy to just put in the ground keep it watered, very little maintenance, and it's a great, easy storage over the winter. Garlic is something that, like the onions, we pretty much are cooking and eating every day. So um, the more I can harvest and store myself would be great. So I just wanna show you how I'm just trying to kind of work around the clove here with my hand, just to kind of pull away that dirt. You wanna be able to to pull it out without doing too much damage to the roots. Again, it's a little bit uh, pretty moist right here because I've been watering through here, but um, I'm going to try and pull it out without doing too much damage. You can use some kind of a potato fork or I'm just using my hori hori knife here, kind of get under and then gently pull. There we go, nice clove of garlic. Something else you want to remember to do if you're growing garlic is to, in the uh, usually early July, the garlic starts to send out these what we call garlic scapes. So they shoot this out, it's got seed in it. So the garlic is trying to uh, self-generate some new seeds so that it can uh, you know, grow some new garlic. So you want to make sure that you are watching for these scapes in your garlic and harvest them off. That way the energy will go back down into the bulb and the garlic will keep growing and be bigger. If you leave these on, you know, a lot of the energy is going to go into self-seeding. So you want to just watch for those and make sure you 
chop them off. They're usually kind of a spirally circle and they make a great uh, item to cook with. You can chop them up and put them into your cooking. They have a nice garlic flavor as well. So this is the garlic harvest. You know, it's not a huge, huge amount of garlic, but I think it's a great amount for two people. My husband and I are the only ones living at home now, so this will definitely last us a while. Um, I, next year I plan to really double down maybe and grow a lot more garlic, trying some new methods in containers, maybe try growing some in the spring and see which uh, works best for us. So this hard neck garlic is, is a good variety for you know our growing zone here in the zone three Canada. Seems to do really well. So for now, that's all I'm gonna do. Just chop back the, uh, the tops. I'm just gonna let them dry so that some of that dirt comes off naturally. Let them develop a little skin layer, cut back these roots and get them ready for storage. So thank you for joining me while I harvest my onions and garlic out of the garden. So I'll be storing this wagon in a spot kind of out of direct sunlight. It's getting lots of wind. We haven't been getting much rain, so I'm not too worried about them getting wet. We'll leave them to dry for a week or two, and then hopefully they'll be ready to store in the basement. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Leave me a comment. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos coming to the channel.